When you dream of your life at sea, what do you picture? Are you a marina hopper, surveying the best beaches and dive spots in the Caribbean before tucking in for sundowners? Or are you an explorer, spending months off the grid, moving wherever the wind takes you? Or maybe you're an adventurer, facing stiff winds and big seas to test yourself out on the ocean. I myself dream of the simple life. Waking up with the sunrise, moving my body with the rhythms of the day, good food, good company, and living with a sense of what my friend Bruno calls convivialité. <laughs> Most of all, I dream of sharing this good life with the people I love. So when our friends Zach and Morgan agreed to join us for two whole weeks of sailing in Martinique, I was thrilled. I couldn't wait to show them all the best parts of living on a sailboat. But life on the water can be unpredictable. Oh, Just when you think you have things under control, the ocean throws you another curveball. Jesus Christ. And since we'd never been to Martinique before, Sam and I would be under a lot of pressure to figure things out quickly. Was this dream vacation really a nightmare in the making? Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. <laughs> this is Le Marin, the Disneyland of sailing. Need a new anchor chain? There's a chandelry for that. How about a new dinghy? There's a chandelry for that. Engine spares? You got it. Fishing gear, tackle, lines? No problem. And then, there's the French food. Wait. What were we talking about again? Right, boats, cruising boats, charter boats, luxury boats, Hobie boats, wooden boats, donut boats, and pirate boats? Our new crew had arrived, so we decided to go check it out. Yes. It was, in fact, a bunch of enthusiasts aboard a replica of a sailboat that existed in the 16th century. How cool is this? You're a sailor now! Well, actually, you're a powerboater, right? I'm basically the captain of the boat right now. Le Marin had been the perfect place for us to welcome our friends and stock up our boat. Now, we were off to explore the rest of the island. The next few days were not so perfect. We could not find a good place to anchor. Either the bay was too full, or the beach was mobbed with tourists, there were no dogs allowed, or the anchorage was too rolly. Things is rocking too much. And the weather was not cooperating. Day after day, it just seemed like we could not catch a break. And we were starting to get worried that our guests were having a bad time. But luckily, we have really incredible friends. And Zach and Morgan were the ones to remind us that they didn't sign up for a luxury vacation. They wanted to experience what it was really like out here. The good, the bad, the ugly. Showering in the rain! <laughs> oh my God. So with their blessing, we decided to show them how cruisers turn a run of bad luck into a damn good time. Do you, uh, do you uh, just put your mouth on? Yeah, you sure do. Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. <laughs> this is the most majestic shower I've ever taken. <laughs> Maybe don't jump in the water right now. Oh, <laughs> Petit bass, Aperitu, Beurre Président, Saucisson, Petit Saucisson, Saucisson, Cornichon, Saucisson! 
When we arrived in Saint-Pierre on the northwest coast of Martinique, we were immediately charmed with what looked like a picturesque fishing town, with its dock, narrow cobblestone streets, and clapboard houses. Quaint, and maybe a little sleepy. But at one point, Saint-Pierre was the economic and cultural hub of Martinique and the jewel of the Caribbean. Tragically, in 1902, Montpellier, the active volcano that towers over Saint-Pierre, erupted, killing 29,000 people and destroying the entire town in a matter of minutes. It's a story that has personal significance to us, because it's how Sam's grandfather came to be born in Trinidad. Leading up to the eruption, some residents of Saint-Pierre, including Sam's great-grandmother, decided to flee from the northern part of Martinique, an adventure that would eventually lead to her settling in Trinidad. Those who stayed behind unfortunately lost their lives. At 8 a.m. on May 8, 1902, there was a massive eruption. By 8.02 a.m., it reached Saint-Pierre, where it destroyed nearly everything in its path and killed nearly everyone. Walking around the city, we could see the remnants of those stone buildings. We walked to the famous prison where one of the sole survivors was in prison when the volcano erupted. He was locked in solitary confinement in a cell with stone walls, no windows, and only a narrow grating in the door facing away from the volcano. And this undoubtedly saved his life. Despite the town's tragic history, Saint-Pierre is beautiful and full of life. Many of the homes and businesses have been rebuilt to incorporate the old stone structures. The culture is rich here, and the people are warm. So, where you're from, if you order a rum punch, you might be expecting a fruity concoction of like juice and other things and rum. Here, a punch is just straight rum. And the waitress was very, very concerned for us that we were all like, yeah, rum punch is for everybody. And she looked at us like, guys, hold up. I don't up. think that's what she wants. She wants <laughs> But the beauty of Saint-Pierre is not only on land, but also below the surface. We are in Saint-Pierre. We are about to go do a little snorkel. Snark, snark. Snark, snark. We're gonna go see uh, an underwater statue called Maman de l'eau. What she said. <laughs> uh, it means mom in the water. Oh, I love that. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> You stop this okay. car. It's a mistake to make after the life you live. With only a couple days left in their trip, we were leaving the beach and headed into the wilderness. We are in the jungle. In the bush. In the bush. apparently, there are tarantules and serpents. That's it.
Good morning! Going to Port de France! There's no wind, so we are using the Iron Jenny. Hi. <laughs> Didn't see you there. After two unforgettable weeks, the time had come for us to say goodbye to our crew. They had been great, always game for adventure and patient with their novice captains. And I felt like we had given them a little taste of the highs and lows that come with the cruiser lifestyle. What? Look at that rainbow! Yeah. Just, just also appreciate the sunset because it's like, you're, the light on your faces is so beautiful. All right, tomorrow at the grocery store we need to get some more La Aperol. Um, La Aperol. You keep saying La Aperol. La Can you La let me La French? We love you, Zach and Morgan. Now on our own again, we stayed in Fort de France thinking we'd take it easy for a couple of days. But pretty soon, we noticed the anchorage starting to get full. Like, really full. Then we started to hear music. In all of our adventuring, we'd totally forgotten. It was about to be carnival. And we were anchored right in the capital. Carnival, sweet, sweet carnival. The costumes, the music, the dancing, the all day parties. We love carnival. I'm in my happy place. Carnival is a big blowout celebration before the period of Lent. Every country where it's celebrated has its own unique take on the festival, and we couldn't wait to find out how Martinique plays Mass. Martinique Carnival is four days long. On Sunday, people gather in the city center to dance. Street orchestras play percussion. Big, powerful sound systems mounted onto 18-wheelers lead the crowds in the parade. Sunday's big event is the presentation of King Vaval, the Carnival King, a massive puppet who shows up at the beginning and the end of Carnival. Monday evening is the burlesque wedding where people wear elaborate bridal costumes and what they consider typical garments belonging to the opposite gender. Tuesday is Mardi Gras, or Fat Tuesday. Everyone is dressed in the color of red, red devils, and many people wear demonic adornments like horns or cow's tails. Finally, the celebration ends with Ash Wednesday. On Wednesday, everyone wears black and white in preparation for the funeral of the King of Carnival. The celebrations reach their peak when the big puppet is finally burned and people party until the wee hours of the morning, grieving the end of Carnival. When we took off for this adventure, we never thought about where we'd be for Carnival. But being in Martinique for the greatest show on earth felt like perfection. The togetherness you feel walking down the road with a group of 10,000 of your best friends, chanting to songs you don't know, dancing and smiling with people you've never met, is totally life-affirming.